A um, little bit longer question, and then I'll read a, a second question. That's I'll just do the longer one first. In the Reformed environment where I grew up, many were quite comfortably unconverted, waiting for God to act. Those that are concerned about their souls tend to find all sorts of reasons why God would not convert them. I fear for their souls. What would you say to them? Please include an explanation of John 6.44 in relation to verses such as Proverbs 2, 4 to 5, Matthew 7, 7 and 8, Luke 13, 24. You're supposed to know all of those. Um, I have been telling them they ought to seek whether they have a desire or not. So if somebody has John 6:44 and um, Proverbs 2, 4 to 5, and the idea of the question of uh, those who are somewhat maybe comfortably unconverted and waiting on God. Oh, these are these are very difficult cases. I've had tons of experience over the last four decades counseling these people, and um, a lot of things you think might work don't work because there's a long, deep-seated, generational conviction that God has to do something striking in some extraordinary way that before they could possibly ever repent and believe and be saved. And that since that is seldom done, and since God seldom converts a person that way, there's really not much hope for me, they think. And so it just, it just goes in a cyclical pattern. And um, one thing I have found to be helpful, most of these people are steeped in a, a, a real Reformed experiential hyper-Calvinistic uh, uh, tradition that has deep, deep, deep respect for certain authors in church history. In other words, I can say something, but it doesn't have the power if they read it in Thomas Boston or Ralph Erskine or somebody who their fathers really admired. Uh, I found it to be most helpful sometimes to just really give those books to, like you know, John Bunyan is a favorite of those people. I give them Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ by John Bunyan. That's often turned people around. The best book I've given to people has helped them a lot is The Christian's Great Interest by William Guthrie because what he shows is there's really two kinds of conversions. The basic common kind is the ordinary way of misery, deliverance, and gratitude. And the extraordinary of special experiences is very unusual. And show them the important thing is you have the basics, the, the misery, deliverance, and gratitude. You believe in the Hutberg Catechism? Yes, they say. Okay, that that's truth? Yes. Okay, now let me ask you six questions. Number one, have you seen your mis sin and misery? Do you realize you're a lost sinner before God? Oh, yes. No doubt there. No problem there at all. Number two, who taught you that? Satan? Oh, no. Oh, he went to... Uh, did you teach yourself that? Oh, no. I can't do anything. Well, who taught you that? Well, um, are, you, are you saying God? Well, you think about it. You have to conclude. I've got two more questions for you. Is your only hope outside of yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he the only one you know that could say, yes, oh, I can't deny that. Who taught you that? Satan? No, no. He... Did you teach yourself? No, no. Well, what does that tell you then? And then I do the same thing with deliverance. Do you have a longing to live a holy life? And these people will say yes. And I'll say, who taught you that? Satan? No, no. Yourself? No. Now you go home and think about that. See, because often the Lord is working in these people. But they're looking for the extraordinary, not for the ordinary way of conversion. Other times, they won't be able to say yes to those questions. Really, they won't. And then you have to say to them, you're not saved. And you need to repent. And you need to believe the gospel. And you give them literature. I found that really helpful.